Sorry for those of you just tuning in. I'm just waiting for, just had some technical difficulties. Um, I'm just going to wait until uh, Vera gets this re-emailed out to everybody. Um, for some reason, it wasn't, we weren't able to create the video from the event on YouTube. So um, just waiting for everybody to sort of connect in um, to the new link. So she's just re-emailing everybody. Um, <clears throat> so hopefully you guys can view this. I see that some people are joining the video, which is awesome. Um, so I'm just, I'm going to have a little bit of a later start. So I'm, I'm going to give people a couple more minutes to kind of figure it out. It's my mistake. Um, just don't know what happened there, but Basically, we weren't able to create a video from the YouTube event. Vera got like locked out or something. So um, again, she's just reinforming everybody where to find the link to the live stream right now. Um, so you can gather your things, your tools while we wait. Uh, I'm just using just a regular everyday pencil. Um, that's it for pencils, actually. I'm not using anything too crazy. And then just grab whatever pencil crowns you have, basically the rainbow colors. Looks all on screen, um, but in person, it's a lot more vibrant up close. There's a lot more colors kind of coming in. Um, so it'll kind of all depend on your brands that you're using and the paper you have and all that. So. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just, it was, we had some sort of technical difficulty. I'm glad you were able to connect. Seems everybody's connecting. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Karen. It's spelled with an I, not an E. Although most Karens I know are nice. So, <laughs> um, and for some, oh good, you made it, Joanna. Hi. Um, from a past comment, if you are wearing he headphones, I recommend maybe turning down the sound <laughs> or just be aware that my chair sometimes pops and it can be scary. <laughs> it's just like a pop, but it like, I guess if you're wearing headphones, it's kind of startling. So just so you know, uh, yes. Yeah, so for colors. You don't want them too vibrant like they you kind of want them a little bit more dull because you're trying to get that more like uh, translucent sort of um what word am i looking for iridescent sort of colors a little bit more pastel-y um so i used didn't use red so don't get rainbow colors i guess Got orange, yellow, blue, green, like a light pink. Maybe it is red. No, it's more pinky. I maybe I used a little bit of red in there, but whatever. Um, some blues. I got different tones of blue. I'll go over that at the very end, though, or before I start. Sorry. Ooh, a first timer, fun. Yeah, sorry, Deborah. Um, we had technical difficulties and like our link wasn't working or something. So um, yeah, it just sort of popped up for you, I guess, which is good. This one's pretty simple. Uh, it's really good for learning, uh, mixing your colors, even if you're not into painting. Um, this is really good because you still blend your colors even though it's pencil crown. Um, you're still kind of learning your basics of how colors sort of uh, mesh together and stuff. So it'll be a good piece to learn. Um, again, I don't know if it's just my screen. kind of looks like sort of bland, but up closer, the colors are a little, are a little bit more vibrant. So it's a dead bug got squished i was drawing outside when i did this piece so um so i'm just waiting for a little bit more people to tune in because i had 
technical difficulties. So I'm going to wait like one more minute and um, we'll get started. Again, just using a pencil um, and grab your pencil crowns. Everybody's going to have different brands. I used a variety of different brands. I used some that are like the cheaper brands, some that are really expensive, um, like higher end sort of colors. Um, so really it's they're all going to turn out a little differently, but it'll still be fun. Uh, oh, sorry, this one isn't watercolor. This is pencil crown. Um, you'll probably want an eraser as well. Know where mine is one second okay um so i'm gonna get started we got quite a bit of viewers going right now so uh let's oh good <laughs> so let's get started now i need my pencil sharpener sorry i literally like just got off work and had to run down to my little basement and get set up so i do not smell nice so that's good this is not a live class <laughs> in person okay so we're going to start with just the uh shapes um they're pretty simple um so my kind of rule for you um newcomers is that when you're drawing you never want to press really hard with your outline um, because first we're adding color so we want that color to be able to cover um, our pencil marks and also you kind of mess up in those or not mess up but you sort of um, kind of start to try and find your groove so those first kind of lines that you draw are never like the best um, so it's good to be able to erase them so if they're too dark it's harder to erase so just try and keep them nice and light don't put too much pressure in your hand i'm going to press just harder so that you can kind of see what I'm doing on my paper. Um, and I will let you know that my webcam has a temperament. So sometimes it just goes out of focus. I do, I can see my screen. So I'll recognize that it's going out of focus and I'll stop and let it refocus itself. Um, so we're going to start with this guy here. Uh, so I always just try and get the basic shape. So we're just going with like a little umbrella. Uh, that's too big. Just kind of get like almost like a little rainbow shape going. Sorry. Try and press a little harder. Hi, hey, Susan. Yeah. Uh, so you know this will the video will just automatically upload to youtube once the live um, stream is over so once i just press end it automatically uploads and you can watch it as many times as you like it stays on youtube forever so um, so let's look at those shapes so they're like little um like little petals almost but you're just kind of coming down to the middle actually let's start with that center one it'll be easiest I come up the middle and then you're just sort of making a little hoop, a little scoop. And come back down. Okay, so it's larger or wider at the top. It comes skinnier as you come down. So we're just making little grooves. Don't worry if it's not perfect. It really doesn't have to be. Is the screen really blurry for anybody else? It could be your connection. Um, if you're sometimes too far away, um, I find there's like a buffering time and it might just not be, it could be like your internet connection. So if anybody has, okay. So that could be it. Um, who said that? Joy. Um, so between little um, your little sections, 
you're going to scoop under. So these ones are um, got like a little, what's that word? Like a bow, like a rainbow. These ones are scooped under. Then you're just going to jump into your next little shape. So you're always kind of coming down towards the center. Eventually they connect. So you kind of want your little sections to connect. So there's only like a wee little gap between them. That should be a little more looped. So you scoop. You're kind of just working along your your rainbow. The one you're working on isn't very. Uh oh, it's blurry. This one I'm working on could just be your again. It could be your connections. I just find. The live stream with YouTube always kind of does that. So if you have a bad connection, uh, you could just watch it after and it might not have that, that blurriness. So you're kind of getting smaller. Your little sections are getting a little um, skinnier, narrow as you kind of come down the shell. I'm going to sort of connect them. That little part between them shouldn't be too big. Like too wide or long. And just connect them. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm in uh, like Ontario, Canada. So if you're like way far away from me, it could be your internet connection if anybody's kind of having problems with that. But if you really wanted to do this piece and it's just too blurry, once it uploads to YouTube, it should sort of um, buffer and get a better or clearer connection. It'll just be like an upload after. Um, so you can kind of want to end your shell sort of, I don't know, kind of like you don't want it all flat. It should still be like a fan. So you still want this like little divot down here. So you don't want to come like flush with like the almost like a horizon line. You still want it to be above that. Okay, so then you're coming then this little part here. So we're Just down at the bottom, you're kind of just scooping out and creating like a little square. That square is going to sort of get cut off once we add the other shells. We're almost going to look like a mushroom. And these lines you can sort of bring down into that little square. We'll do all the fine little details with the pencil crown, but just so you can kind of envision what it's supposed to look like. So you can do the other side now. So this middle one's sort of the biggest piece. Scooping along. So then they should sort of be connecting. Remember to get a little smaller as you come down your shell. Mm. 
I'm going to do one more, but this one is probably going to get cut off anyways, but just so, just in case yours is, is a little different. And it's okay if they're like kind of a little wonky on one side. Say you like this side better and you don't like that side, you can cover this side with your shell. Or if you like this side, you can kind of cover it. Like again, it, the placement doesn't really matter too much. So right now it looks kind of wonky and that's okay. Once we add those colors, it all kind of makes sense. Technically this should be like a lot wider, but it doesn't matter right now. Um, so we're going to do this shell first, or add that shell in first. Um, kind of like this side better though, but anyways, um, it's going to be like a little spiral. Sorry, my brain is just like, blah, still in work mode from today. So <laughs> um, maybe try, I would kind of use this, like your, one of your shell little sections as the edge of your shell. So it kind of morphs into it. Um, but I am going to be starting from the center and working outwards, but just so you can kind of envision your shell first. Sort of add that let little edge in just so you can kind of gather its shape. I'm running out of room here. I didn't really place it. I kind of went a little bit too big with that shell, but it is okay. Okay, so pretty simple. We're just spiraling outwards. And I'm just going to morph it into that section of my seashell that I don't like. I'm running out of room. No. Um, one sec. I got to, I might have to change my shell to be going the other way. So my little spout is like on this side. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Un momento. I'll show you both ways in case you have the same issue. This is a hard part with a spiral. Is how do you make it go backwards? It's messing my brain up. Ah, it's still going the opposite way. So I need to get my bearings here. So it should come out that way. <sighs> I'm just gonna have to move it over. It's driving me nuts, sorry. It's like I can't seem to like mirror the image in my mind working. I'm just gonna adjust it and shove it over a little bit so I can get my little spout in or make it smaller. This is a lot of drawing. This is all what drawing's about is readjusting. 
I'm just going to start my little circle over just a sliver. There. It's so weird to like do that. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, so yeah, that little lip, that kind of, that little opening in the shell, you're just kind of coming out from the spiral. I just gave it like a little lump and a bump. Lumpy bump. Okay. Kind of scoop it up. Like a little bowl. And you're seeing this is like the inside of it. So you can just join um the little side of the shell and just another loop and a scoop okay, round it out a little bit so it's not so sharp okay sorry for the delay there all oh, my brain legged This one's easier, I promise. You'd think this one would be, because it's just a spiral. Um, so we're gonna start with, I always like to start with just the general shape of things, almost like a little, like a little blueprint. Um, so it's just kind of, almost like a little triangle. Like a rounded triangle. Okay, and then we can add all that detail in after. Again, it just comes around, comes into a little cone. Okay, and then that little lip that comes out. So you can decide whether it kind of cuts off a little bit more of this piece, or if you want this underneath, you can tuck it. Doesn't really matter. Maybe I'll bring it down a notch. I'm not completely covering up my spiral. I always go way too big in my tutorials. I'm just going to take down the size ever so slightly. So from like the very tip, I'll hook out. So for this little shape in here, up here, and just started with like a little kind of scoops up. Come down that side and you're on an angle here. It's almost like a little slanted square. We're gonna see a little lip of like the top of this section because it's like spiraled out. So just give yourself like a little itty bitty ledge there. So kind of just, and make sure all your sides are sort of round or all your corners are sort of rounded. You don't want really square corners because it's very soft. Okay, so now you're just making another little section. I'm just kind of coming down. Again, just sort of kind of slanted down, arched my way up, rounded out my edge. Okay, 
Again, give yourself another little ledge. I'm just rounding this out. I'm just going to connect this some way. That connects there. So this is like a little corner. I just started the drawing with this shell. So it's just like a little um, umbrella shape. And I just make all the little sections. And then this crazy spiral. And then that one. If you're just tuning in now. There's layering. Um, so I'm going to get it. talk about color for a second while you sort of adjust your seashells. So I'm going to just cut this in. If you have like this random edge, maybe cut it in so it sort of all forms together. I just do one little sliver. Um, so let's talk about color. If you, I'm just gonna pretend you know nothing about color. Um, just for those of you who are maybe brand new to art or whatever. Um, your, you have your cool colors and your warm colors. And then I like to think of green as this, like, it doesn't know what it wants to be. Um, so basically your cool colors are your, your blues and your purples. And then your warm colors are your oranges and your pinks and your reds. Um, basically how you would think that they would be. Um, some colors cannot mix. Okay, even though it's pencil crown, you would you'd think that they don't mix well. It's or that they don't mix at all. It does mix on paper, so it can become sort of like a brown, mucky color. You know, when you mix your paint too much and it just becomes like a a yucky color. You can still have that same effect with pencil crown, um, or colored pencils, whatever you want to call them. Um, so the one thing you want to think of, even if you're just want to pull it up on Google um, is to look at your color wheel. So your purples like always look at what's opposite of each other on the color wheel. So purple right directly opposite of it is yellow or green and they don't mix well. Same with um, like orange and green I believe are opposite on the color wheel. They don't mix very well. So um, you always want to keep like your warm colors together and your cool colors together. But then this is where green comes in, where it can mix with a cool color. So it can mix with blue, but it can also mix with yellow. So you kind of have to be careful of where you add it. Um, so the green is going to be like, you don't want to go too crazy with it. Uh, I'm going to walk you like step by step through it and stuff and how to mix them. but. Um, just so you're kind of aware. Uh, now I'm going to take a minute and kind of pick out my colors. I have way too many pencil crowns and I have all different brands. It may turn out completely different if, because I didn't really label which colors I used. Uh, but basically I just stuck, um, stuck to my regular, wow, oh, there's my 2B pencil. Um, just some fun basic primary sort of I really like this one it's a nice pink an orange and a yellow again different brands will have different effects some brands are really bright um, some brands are really dull so it kind of depends on the look you're going for um, I tried to stay a little bit more translucent or iridescent, sort of, so I chose like more pale, um, some of, like my cheaper brands. Uh, I don't want to like bash any brands, so it's not that it's a negative thing that they're dull. 
Um, it just means that they're different and kind of work in a different way. But sometimes they're better for that reason, where you really want a dull sort of color. Um, so yeah, I have like Stadler or like Crayola would be good for something like this, where you don't want it to be too like, ah, too bright. Uh, and then I have some pencil crowns that are like really, really bright. And they're kind of nice sometimes for that reason. So I'm just picking out my colors. I got like a light blue, true blue, it says. And I have to play with my greens because some will look dark and they come out like really bright. I'm like, what? So that's going to be an experiment. Orange, uh, you'll want like a dark blue at some point. That dark blue is like kind of what, you want contrast. You always kind of want like a really heavy contrast. I always try and get like multiple shades of one color. Ooh, I have like a violet. I don't think that's what I use though. So I'm looking for a specific color. Ooh, this one, magenta, my deep blue. Okay. So, anyways, um, when you start, I started with yellow. So everything had had this undertone of yellow first. If you want to change the colors and you don't want it rainbow. You're just going to have to kind of be careful of your layering system. Um, now, usually I take out my pencil because yellow and pencil do not mix well at all. They are enemies. They kind of get really mucky. Um, but if you're really light, if your pencil was like super light and you couldn't really, you can barely see it, then you're fine. Um, I might have to erase mine just a little bit. Okay, I have a specific yellow and I can't find it. Whatever. I'm going to have to use this little baby yellow for now. Tiny, tiny yellow. Unless I use this one. We'll see. Okay. I'm going to go with this one for now. It's just in my pencil extender, so that's a yellow um so it didn't go too crazy with the yellow to start I'm just going to erase some pencil in here just you don't have to completely take it all out but just so you can i'll do a few sections at a time so you can still see my drawing So I just like lightly filled in my sections. I'm not pushing hard. Um, you just kind of want this to be an undertone. So when you're doing pencil crown, you kind of want to think of it like painting in a sense, um, where you're adding layers. You don't have to have just one solid color to fill something in. Oh, yeah, this one's like a... Um, it's too lemony. I don't know if I like it. I wanted this like sunny yellow. Um, but yeah, so if you start with like um, just a soft undertone and then you add your colors on top. So it's kind of like just a layering. Oh, there goes my blur. Hold on. I need to get my webcam to sort of focus back. There we go. It's temperamental. Um, so right now I'm just filling in my sections, not the little in-between sections. So not those little divots, those little triangle pieces. If you filled it in by accident, don't worry about it. Um, basically just going forward, try and like kind of only stay in your sections for now. Let's just do like three. We'll do three at a time, just so it's nice and simple. We're going at the same sort of pace and... Kind of work together but 
yeah, pencil crown is a lot like painting where you're just layering and layering and layering. So I'm just getting this soft little undertone happening first. So it's just the color of the seashell, a little under skin almost. And then, so you want to view each section as like its own entity. So now I'm going in with, like, so I decided that all my left, the left side of each section is my cool colors. And then the right side is all my warm colors. So I started with like a little bit of blue. So you're just sort of adding it in nice and soft right on top of your yellow and just sort of like you don't have to do like a solid line or anything you're just like softly adding in a little layer and then it's just going to be constant sort of layering so just in like my one see how it kind of makes it go green a little bit when you add the blue on top of the yellow so i'm almost just coloring in the corner maybe right down the edge a little bit. And you don't want it to just be like a solid brick of the color, sort of fade it into the middle a little bit. And you start to push a little harder. They'll start to blend. Once you press harder, that starts to blend the colors. It'll look messy for a bit until you start layering and adding everything in. So let's just start with a little. So sometimes I just like flick down. So I'm like just a little flick. So it kind of blends into the color. So I'm not always. I'm oh, sorry. It's out of focus again. Come on. So I kind of like flick down from the top so it kind of blends in. So I'm not just having this like solid line of color. Okay, and you can start kind of pushing up from the center too, like with a little bit of your blue. You kind of flick it up between your little sections. We want like a nice deep contrast between um, at the bottom. So it kind of separates your little sections because the uh, kind of gets lost a little bit. So I got a little bit of blue in there. You can ignore the green. I kind of added the green at the very end um, just because it is temperamental. So now I went with a warm color. So now I'm opposite side so this is my orange and i'm going opposite of my blue I'm just kind of slightly adding that in again you don't need to have this like really dark contrast of color um you just sort of want to nice like baby soft If you want a more prominent color, you can just press a little harder, but then you're going to get that solid orange. Okay, but sometimes that's nice. So if you want that kind of look, you can press a little harder. Um, the one thing you're going to want to keep in mind, too, is that we want this, like, shininess to it. So in the middle of my shell or each section, you can see that it's a little bit whiter. So... The one thing you want to keep in mind is when you're filling in is not, I mean, we already put that yellow on top, but um, try not to push your color like in the middle too much. So we want this like lightness, this highlight happening in the middle of our section so that it'll look shiny at the end. Um, now, if you went in like solid yellow and you're like, oh no. Um, you can still erase. So sometimes I use my eraser quite a bit. Um, like in here, this is where I added my eraser. It takes out color. So it like almost erases the pigment, but the pencil crown is still staying the paper. So the color's still there, but it's just less. So you can, if you want to do that now, just so you can kind of see it happen. 
Um, so I just, just make sure there's no gray on your eraser so you're not putting that lead on your paper. And I'm just like erasing the center of each little section. And the, each section, it still has that yellow tinge to it on the paper. But it's now lighter. Yeah, I'm just using pencil crayons. Not pencil, but pencil crayon. Colored pencil. And then, then I started kind of playing with my colors. Let's go in with that green. I just want you to kind of see all your little sections sort of start to emerge. And then we can kind of work at our own pace. Um, so then I went in with a green. Now this is where, oh, let me try out this green. I don't know if this is the same one. But again, green is that like... It's not the same green at all. Green is temperamental, where it only plays nice with blue and yellow, I find. I really don't think it mixes with like any other color. So right kind of down the center, I'm just sort of flicking my green in from the base of the shell. So kind of flicking it up. And maybe you can accompany your blue with a little bit of green at the top of your little section. It's very soft. You don't need to press too, too hard with your colors. You're just sort of softly blending them. If you want a little bit more blue, you can add more blue. We are going to go in with a dark blue and sort of start to blend them out a little bit. It's okay if like your green hits your orange a little bit, but I wouldn't like layer them. So I always like flick out. So I'm flicking my pencil so it um, blends the color out. So it's not just like a solid stark line. So now what, let's see what happens when we add the pink and the purples and the blues in the little in-between parts. It makes those other colors really pop. Sorry, it's out of focus again. Gamma. Right, like need something to focus on to bring it back down to life. Come on. Oh, it's not focusing. It's like it needs to be like coaxed. Come on. Okay, well, I'm just going to keep coloring. Oh, maybe I'll do one section until I can see my webcam starts to refocus itself. Sometimes it just needs to like adjust. Let's do one more section. See if that helps it. Come on. Now he's just bugging me. You can see it's like slightly out of focus. But it needs to like, there we go. Oh, I might got it. There we go. I'm going to ignore that section there. Let's add that pink and the purples. Uh, it doesn't really matter what pinks. I don't even remember what I used. So let's. Ooh. It's a little. Uh, I don't know if I like this one. I like the color, but I don't know if it's. You can go with like a baby pink would be really nice because it's that like soft pastel. I'm going to try that first before I jump into that. Um, so in between your little sections, those little triangle pieces, 
Just add a little bit of pink. You can probably barely see that on screen. I go with my darker pink so you can see it. You can just splitting down between your sections. I didn't go all the way to the bottom of my seashell with that pink. See how it makes the orange like warmer? So your colors really change when you accompany them with another color. And it's, um, you want to think of black and white in the same way. Your darks look darker when there's a white beside it. And your whites look brighter when there's a dark beside it. Same with color. So I just filled them in pink and then I'm going in with like a dark blue or purple. Really totally up to you. Maybe I, I think I used both actually. With like a violet and then like a navy blue. And I just sort of, I'll bring this up closer to the camera. In a second. So a, so I'm sort of framing those little shapes. You don't have to box them in completely, but kind of just, and then I filled in the corners. I can't really do it right now because the paper's in the air, but it kind of went in just like in the little corners with like a little bit of blue or a little bit of purple on top of that pink so it shadows it and you can kind of outline re-outline your little seashell sections and you can throw in some purple or magenta of this like bright sort of Almost looks like red, but purple at the same time. Really nice color. You can play with that a little bit. I even kind of brought it into my orange section a bit on the seashell itself. So you can kind of play around with that. Um, and also dark blue coming out from the bottom. So all these lines kind of connecting at the base in here, they're gonna be dark blue. You can add it in after, but just so you can kind of see where it's coming from. Um, so let's kind of get through that shell. They're all kind of a little bit different, but the same. So work at your own pace. Um, we'll just do a shell by shell. So just go in softly with your yellow. I like to do one thing at a time. So if I would have went in with all my yellow instead of like doing section by section and switching up your pencil crowns every section, I just find it easier to do like one task at a time sort of thing. Um, and try and remember that the center of each section is supposed to be lighter. So don't go too harsh with those colors. And then, or also you can erase out, so I just got to erase a smudge, but you can erase out the section of each little section to make it look shiny. You're learning lots of basics today. Um, I know that I have a lot of joiners that have been drawing with me for a year, over a year now. Um, but for you newcomers, this is a good sort of lesson just on how colors work, really. And pencil crowns, if you're not used to them. 
Again, just a nice soft tone for that base coat. It's all about layering. This actually came out perfectly. I wasn't even intending it for Pride Month, but nice and rainbow. So happy Pride. Remember to race out your sections. I haven't really been doing that just because this is an example piece anyway. So I try and not go yellow over top of pencil. It's kind of mucky. I'm usually a little bit more careful when I'm doing a piece, but. And if you want more yellow, like sometimes I, um, I kind of went back in and just added like a little dash of darker yellow. So I just pressed a little harder, maybe between my green, and a little bit of my orange. So it's just like, psah, makes it a little bit, gives it a little bit more of a punch. You could even switch it up. Well, if you started this way, I wouldn't switch it now, but you know, if you want to do this drawing again and do just like pastels, like a purple baby pink and a baby blue, that would be really nice. And it doesn't matter what side you start on. I'm going in with my orange because it's the first thing I grabbed, but again, pull, you always want to like blend out your colors. So I'm like pulling down, flick in instead of just a straight, you know, color. You're softly trying to blend the two. And we're not to go too far down with that orange because you want that green shooting up. Green and orange don't mix well. So this one's easy because we're kind of doing the side by side with the colors. Um, the spiral is going to get a little bit more challenging because we kind of have to blend them into each other in a sense because it's a spiral, but a lot more fun. Even add pink into that those little orange sections. Ooh, very nice. Thanks, Susan. If you look at your color wheel, basically my rule is a secondary color and a primary color don't blend well except for green actually no don't follow that rule because it doesn't make sense it makes sense in my head but it's not the case really because purple is a secondary color and blue is a primary color but they mix well so i think it's what I should say is, is that a secondary color and a primary color opposite of each other don't mix. There we go. But 
But if you do look at a color wheel, like just a basic one, you can kind of see that what is opposite of each other. It's just green that's the odd color. Uh, so I'm going to go in with some blue. Just do my opposite side. You can press a little harder, like to get that like really bright blue in there to make it look like it's really vibrant. I just pressed a little harder. So that's where you can kind of layer in if you want. But you kind of have to try and blend it into the rest. Sometimes like in here, so it's not just like this soft outline. You kind of want a little bit of a harsher outline. That's where I kind of went in with my blue and gave it like a little bit of a harsher corner at the tops. So it almost makes it look like it's glowing or just more vibrant, I guess. It's like just press a little harder. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Big sections, pretty. Ooh. That's a weird shape I just did. Um, if you're looking to get into pencil crayon or just playing around with it, Prisma Color is awesome. I love it. It's less expensive, but more of like a higher quality pencil crayon. They're really fun to play with. I just find they're like really bright. I went really harsh with that blue and now it's kind of making my orange look really flat so I might just toss in a sunlight actually I might go in with some pink after I just kind of pump up my orange Um, I just created it. I just looked up different shells, sort of, and then just played around with it. So that'd be good for basic learning if it's. And it's good to know these things and practice instead of like going into a painting and not really knowing your color. Cause Painting can be overwhelming if you don't know the basics of even drawing because you have to like make a lot of shapes in drawing or in painting. So it's kind of good to get those little lessons in drawing just to be able to help your painting better. Um, so I'm just going in with that green coming up from the center. I didn't go too crazy on the green. Again, I can I might toss it in a little bit beside my blue. I kind of flick up.
Yeah, painting's fun. I like painting. I started with watercolors when I was really young. Then got into painting and then got into drawing. Just a slight bit of green in there and then what did I do? Oh, pink. Uh, actually, I might do my, no, I'm going to do my pink and then do that, that darker blue coming through. Doesn't really matter, I guess. Um, so I got kind of like that magenta pink and you can think of those little sections too as like you want a little highlight between them. So like the center of them can be a little bit more highlighted. So I just didn't press as hard with my pink. Just as you get kind of into those bigger sections. It's definitely not the same color I used, but it's okay. See immediately how it kind of makes the these colors stand out more. When you add that warmer color, once I add that blue, it's going to cool down that pink. Remember to race out some of your centers if your seashell isn't too bright or if it's too colored. You can tone it down with erasing some of it. Again, it just picks up the pigment of the, the waxy pencil crown. Go little, this whole section's gonna bug me. I don't really want to end off with a pink. I might just add a tiny little yellow section, dip it around here. And then I'm going to add that dark blue or purple into those little pink sections. I just sort of picked a side. I'm just kind of colored in the corner a bit. And framed. Sort of cut down. Not all the way, but sort of split between my sections again. Maybe even a little bit of my tops, like on the blue section of your, um, your little in-betweeny things. Um, you can add in, I just kind of framed the top of it about halfway. So it's got like a really dark sort of outline.
I might even go in with a little bit of purple that you want. See how that, like that dark color starts to divide the, the sections a little bit more noticeably. Like I just find the difference between this side and that side's like already very obvious. Just having that little bit of outline helps divide the sections up. You like the drawing, but not the girl. That's nice. So nice of you. Um, I'm using right at the moment. I'm using Stadler. Um, I'm also using Prismacolor. Prismacolor. Um, a little bit of Faber Castle. They're really expensive though, so I don't use them often. They're really nice. You, I'm talking about you. You said, I love drawing, but not girl. <laughs> Lily, I'm calling you out. It's not nice. Give you a free event and you're just cut me up. So I'm going to go in with that darker blue at the bottom too. Um, I might just go in with my regular blue actually just to sort of. just to sort of make it pop even more so. Thank you. Hold on. I just have to block somebody. <laughs> Sorry. I just learned that I can do something. It's really funny. I can put people in timeout. <laughs> Okay, um, so I'm going to move on to another seashell just so that you can kind of work at your own pace. If you're still working away up here, that's fine. Um, just so you can, so we can kind of just get moving. So they're all going to turn out a little different. This one obviously looks different from that one, but uh, that's all that art's about. Just exploring, having fun, and a slice in some purple right in or sorry it's like a magenta so i'm gonna put in a dash right in my orange or below my orange 
not harsh at all just a little little sliver and we want all those colors kind of popping make it really fun and colorful <laughs> oh i got a kick out of it it's all good okay um let's do i like to always i'm right-handed so i like to do the left so i'm not kind of working over top of this one um, so I'm going to jump onto this one. I tried to mix that up a little bit so that maybe there's a little bit more blue sort of prominent in this one instead of the yellow. Like it still had obviously the yellow in there, but um, so you can change it too. I just tried to keep it the same, but if you want it to be like more bluey tones, you can just, now that you can uh, have seen how the, the layering works. Um, oh, sorry. There's a one little sliver of that piece of the seashell that I'm seeing. Sorry. I'm just going to finish that off. I just did it blue and purple. Doesn't really matter. It's just a little sliver. It's like the bottom of the seashell. You can really pick any color you like. Maybe a slice of pink. Okay. Um, so somewhat of the same idea. You're going in with, oh, there's my blue. That's the blue I wanted. Anyways, um, so I started with like, yeah, more of the blue tone. Ooh, that's a nice deep blue. Um, and think of your sections the same as up here. So you're still trying to highlight the center of them. So I'm keeping them nice and light in the center. Um, I went in just with a little bit of dark blue coming in from the edge here. And I sort of flicked it inwards. So again, you're trying to blend out your color. Never just want your color to just immediately stop, like it's a block. So I, I slice it in, so I'm like flick, 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 flick. Okay, so it runs out. So it's like a nice little transition. And then with my light blue, sort of just went soft, 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 soft in the center. Sort of more filled it that whole top piece in light blue um what you want to do with this piece is that we want to slowly transition into that yellow so see how it's not just like blue and then yellow we need to softly try and get to that piece so i only added in with those two blues a little bit of magenta so so a pink or a purple you could add in if you do purple maybe i would put in a little slice of okay that's more purpley um let's put in some of that pink we need to slowly transition our colors i don't like that pink into yellow or into our warmer colors i should say so just very softly put in a hint of pink and that way we can add a little bit more pink and then we can get in a little to more pinks. So it's like a nice transition. Um, so I went a little too dark there. So again, you can go in with your eraser if you can and just Again, you're not trying to completely take it off your paper. You're just taking out some, some pigment. Sorry, I'm blurring out again. No. Come on. I'm trying to coax, for those of you joining, I'm just trying to coax my webcam to focus on my paper. Sometimes it, like, helps with my hand. I give it, like, a little 
magic wave and then it slowly focuses down to the base. It's not happening. Come on. Almost in focus. Um, so that little ledge here too, so those little skinny ledges that we did, um, that's where I started slowly trying to get those warm colors back in as well. I'm just going to take a little second to get my webcam. Stop being a brat. Come on. Yeah, got it. Um, so in here, I just added a little bit of yellow. Soft, soft, soft yellow, but mostly pink. So it's Again, we're trying to get to that warm colors. So it's yellow. And pink. Okay, and then in this one, again, I did blue again. So I got my dark blue coming in harshly along that edge. You can outline a little bit of that ledge with your blue. I'm going to sort of flick in, flick, flick, flick. You transition to your light blue. Try and keep your center. Sorry for my squeaky chair. Um, try and keep that center of that section nice and light. Excuse me. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I got like a cat hair in my mouth. <laughs> um, and then again, sort of add in that pink or that purple. I have like a very, again, I'm not trying to bash any companies or anything. I have to say that, but. Um, it, it does help. So those ones I found Stadler, they're very good for pencils. I use them every single day, do all my commission work with the Stadlers, but I find their pencil crowns are a little dull, but I do like that for things like this where I don't want it to be bright. I want that dull purple right now because I don't want it to take over too much. And like what happens is when I'm like blending into it into my blue with it it's almost just like accompanying the blue with that purple so sometimes those like see you can barely see the purple but you kind of want that so it's like almost like a bluey purple um so sometimes those are helpful it doesn't completely become too contrasted in color uh. Ha, got it. And then again, a little bit more pink this time. I'm going to go in with that soft, soft, soft baby pink. Sorry, my chair is just having the time of its life right now, squeaking it up. And I'm just going to jump right into that yellow. The next section is going to be yellow, pink, and blue. Not so much the dark blue. It's a little bit of that light blue and a little bit of that dark blue around the corner. So you, and this little ledge too. Make sure you get rid of that line. That ledge is there, but it's not as prominent. Yeah, that's like where the seashell kind of dips out. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Just 
soft, soft yellow. Okay, about halfway. Uh, go in with your light blue on the other side. Sorry if anybody's wearing headphones. Someone told me that my chair, when it pops, it's like, it scares her. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's really annoying. Um, so now we've got to try and transition this in between part. So a nice soft. Sorry, and that top of that ledge there is pink. So this little teeny edge. And this is where I'm going to try and get most of that pink. between that yellow and that blue. See how there's like a little dash of pink coming through. And pink and yellow make orange. So depending on your pencil crown brand, sometimes it'll mix and make like a orangey color and that's okay. I have like this really soft pink and it just really blends nice. Okay, you can even, pink is that nice color too that it can actually blend with cool colors and warm colors. So it can blend with blue and I find it makes it like a little bit more purpley and then it can blend with the yellow and make orange. However, it doesn't blend with green. Green is that one finicky color that can only really blend well with yellow and blue. Okay, so it's very hard to tell on screen probably, but I kind of had this nice this nice little transition color happening where my blue and my pink are making this like little tone of purple and then my yellow and my pink are making an orange but then i have like this soft little spot of pink happening so it's all about just mixing and playing with your colors it's, you can't go wrong um and then well I guess you could, but um, that's how you learn, just exploring. Um, again, if you want that really nice little bright spot, you need some of that like white kind of popping. You can come in with your eraser, get in like a little, in that yellow, maybe in that yellow spot right here. Right there, nice shiny. You might follow that shine up to the next little section. Mm -hmm. Taking out some of my color and just makes like a little pop. Yep, it'll be up on YouTube right after um, once the live stream is done. It just automatically uploads and you can rewatch anytime you like. It'll be up forever. Um, so now this section here. Now we get to play. These are fun. This is a fun little section here. Um, let's go in. Oh, actually, one more thing up there with that dark blue. Just in this little corner. I gave it a nice dark outline. So it pops. Yeah. Okay. Um, light, light yellow.
And then now you have to follow the shape of this shell because it's protruding. So it's like a rounded object almost. Um, so you got to get that sh scoop going. So it's not just like flat down because it'll make this, the object look flat. So I'm going in with green. It really doesn't matter. Um, so I got like green, then pink, green, blue, purple, kind of just not letting them really touch much. Um, but that green, again, kind of flicking and I'm curving it. And so it's making it look like a rounded object. It's going with the shape of the object. And very light with that green. Oh, hello, kitty. Just a little green there. Uh, I gave this little piece a lip. You can add that green. Actually, I'll keep it simple. Don't worry about that right now. And just add a little bit of green up here for fun. I just kind of had fun with this one and mixed them all, sort of. Went really soft. I'm not pushing too hard. I don't want a really uh, too bright of colors here. And then pink beside that green again. And pink and green don't mix, so I didn't blend them together. I just sort of let them sit beside each other. And brought that pink down a bit further. And pressed a little bit harder. So it pops on top of the yellow. Again, this is my cheaper brand. Not cheaper. But just um, dollar, dollar. Again, works in our favor sometimes. Yeah, I kind of brought the pink up from the bottom here. Oh, there's a little scoop. Um, I added like this little like extra curve happening. Yep. We can add that in. Let's do that right now. So this is like the original. You can just outline this. This is going to be dark anyways, but just so you can kind of see. So what I did was curved into it. So there's like an extra little... Almost like a little lip or a cut in the shell. Because with that blue underneath that little cut, kind of flicked in that blue a bit. Maybe went up top here and went right beside my green with that blue. Just in this little corner. Um, maybe a little bit of blue coming down from this corner as well. Try not to go too harsh with it because it'll turn green. Or you could press... And just a little itty bit of dark blue in there. Then I did some orange coming in from the side, kind of almost morphing into that pink a bit. I'm not pressing too hard. I really don't want it to just be bright orange. I just want it to be like reflecting orange into it. Not too bright. Okay, 
came up the side just a tinge with the that orange, like a little halo. Maybe like a little bit in this little sliver of that blue, I added a teeny bit of orange in there. You're just playing with your colors at this point. I'm gonna go in with that purple. Ooh, maybe my magenta. It's too dark, I don't like that one. See those like so Fabric Castle, they're awesome. They're like a dollar or like a dollar twenty-five for a one pencil crown. Um, they're really great, but for something like this, I find they aren't it's not what you want because they're too bright. It's like they're too good. You want that iridescent look. So if you're beginning and you only have like you're using pencil crowns from like grade school that you found from like the 80s. Perfect. That's what I'm using. <laughs> I found Laurentian. I don't even know if they even make these anymore. This is from when I was like, like five years old. <laughs> but they work great for stuff like this where you really just want that dullness. I'm adding a little bit of purple pop in. A little bit more of that pink. Maybe this one. Ooh, I like this pink. Sometimes where I like forgot to outline something, that's where I like throw in a little color so it like makes that color pop. So like down in the itty bitty corner, I had a little bit of white pop in there. I just threw in that pink and it makes it like really prominent, but just a fun little, gives it a little highlight, a little time to shine. I throw in a little bit more pink here. And then again, if you kind of got a mesh of too much color and we need that white popping, okay, that highlight. So if that works for you, Again, just going with your eraser, and I just erased in a little slice of white. Might not work on, I'm not sure what kind of paper you have. Might be different based on your paper. I have like kind of a smooth texture, so it helps. But depending, let me just slice back into that white a little bit to blend it out. Okay, so let's do this little any part and then we'll do our spiral and we'll be done. I just want to make sure we get done at a decent time so I can see some viewers dropping off a little bit. I know it's, it takes a lot of practice or patience, I should say. Um, so this little shell, this little part of the shell has, um, just grab your pencil for a second if you didn't do this. Because I didn't, um, it almost looks like an ear. And there's like a little ledge to it, or a little edge. Uh, so you can draw that edge in with your pencil. So it's just like a skinny little line accompanying that outer line. Okay, my, my shape's a little different. This one's a little bit more like squished in. Um, this one you're kind of seeing more of like more of the inside. So will all depend kind of how you drew yours. It's all going to be different anyways. Um, but with your dark blue, so you're coming in in that corner. And it's like dark around the edge mostly, but it's lighter sort of on this inner part. I don't have much space. So I'm not going to do as much dark blue, but again, you have to keep the shape going. So now you have to think that the shape is um concave so concave if i remember from science is think of a cave so it's dipping inwards a convex is like a the outer side of a spoon sort of um so this one you have to 
go with the shape. So you're scooping with this same shape. So it's curving the line. And just kind of in the center area. So it gives the appeal that it's, you're kind of seeing it scoop out. Come in this little corner with that dark blue. Kind of work it into that curve a little bit. So again, I don't have much room, but if you have more area, then you can definitely darken it. More. Kind of just along this edge. It's pretty well dark. And then if you have any more room in here, um, I just did like light blue, threw in some pink, some purple, whatever you got. Um, just try and make it l nice and light in there. So you want this a little bit of a halo. So in this lighter area, just go really soft. Don't push too hard. So you have a nice little highlight. Exactly. All shells are different. They all look different. There's like a snowflake. You'll never see the same. I'm not liking my purple, though. So I might go in with a little bit of pink. And then that edge, that little ledge or outer rim or whatever, um, I did that uh, with a little bit of green, actually, green and blue. Again, you can erase your highlight in there. Sorry, it's hard to see, but there's some that pinks popping through. So it's not just solid blue. You got pinks going. Ah, yes. Okay, remember, you can erase that highlight. See how that made a difference? And it kind of smushed my colors together, so it made it look really soft. So again, with this little edge, I just did like a little bit of green. Or you can do pink. It really doesn't matter, I don't think. Whatever you like. So that there wasn't much green in this shell, so I was like, why not? And a little bit of that light blue. And I gave that like a little bit more of a harsher outline on that outer edge. And then soft in the middle of that ledge. A soft little highlight. So you should have like a nice dark, dark outline. Okay, so now we're on the spiral. We got 20 minutes left, so please stay. I can see you so dropping off. Um, I'm sure people have to go, but we'll finish up. This one's not too complex. Um, erase any of that shell outline that you have. Make sure you're not erasing with your colored part of your eraser. So I'm using my lead side. Just any outer lines or eraser or pencil marks from earlier. Um, so I started, it's all yellow again, this time because it's a round surface, but it's like bubbled out, um, your highlight marking. So how we did these highlights or the highlights in these sections, is going to be directly in the center of the spiral, like kind of. Think of the center between the lines, basically, is the highlight, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so just be mindful of that if you're, when you're kind of coloring it in. So again, I just started with just going in with that soft, soft yellow. I didn't really, like, go in that, like, whole 
didn't try to fill it in like this way. I just literally, because it's so soft and we're going to be drawing on top, I guess you could be a little bit more careful and because you always want to color in the direction of the object you're trying to achieve. This one, I find it, it's not really a big deal because it's an underlayer. So I'm kind of just using the side of my pencil. I'm just kind of getting a flat undertone. If you want to be a little bit more careful with it, you can. Um, but we'll go in with a little bit of darker, like push a little harder with that yellow and get it get that tone in there so it doesn't really matter too much this is just again you're just adding like a little underneath layer um before i start explaining things for this one keep in mind like this last 15 minutes um i'd love to get some suggestions for a free event in july like what do you want to draw what do you want to see um if there's anything that's kind of on your mind that you want to learn i would love to take suggestions i am so swamped with work and stuff that my creative juice is just not flowing as much in the summer um so i this is I just love taking suggestions. It helps me kind of get the creative juices flowing again. So if there's something you want to see me do or you want to learn, let's hear them. Um, so let's start with that center. I always kind of work my way out. Um, this one's kind of a weird one. Let's start with light blue. It doesn't matter. So I kind of went like cool colors and then you have to like very carefully transition into that green and that green kind of hooks around and then i kept the light the warmer colors on the outside Ooh, i could suggest that painting for the painting artists that would be nice i have done an elephant oh my gosh a blueberry cupcake with iced tea in a teacup. That's adorable. Mm. Okay, so with that blue, let's just start with like a little ring. Actually, that whole part is... Oh, my whole outline is done in dark blue. I didn't realize I did that. Where's my dark blue? <coughs> I lost it. <coughs> Excuse me. A dark blue outline. The <laughs> monkey, that's so cute. Uh, no, they're not watercolor. They're just like regular the pencil crowns i got like a variety i do have watercolor pencils pencil crowns though so with this one it's weird so i'm flicking with so i'm just using my light blue right now and i'm flicking with the shape so just follow your outline and i sort of just split it outwards so you're just like whoop like a little fan You're going to have to like flick, You're almost making it look like a little tidal wave. And it just started flowing it, went back to that little tip and just started flowing it outwards. It just kind of constantly spiraling it. I was thinking of something like for my free event 
something like unisex because I wanted to do like a high heel, but then I was like, hmm, I don't think all men would want to draw a high heel. So I, was, I like to do my free ones. We like try and think of them a little bit more. That's why I like the animals. The monkey's a good idea. Um, and I also added like another cut in this. So it kind of comes down from like this outer line. And I added like another cut of blue. I'm just like really flicking this one. Kind of added maybe some coming down the side as well. It doesn't overly matter too much where you're really placing. your color choices, but as long as they're like together. So my blues now that I have my blues in there, that's where I have to place all my cool colors. Okay, this could be opposite. You could put your orange and your yellows here and your pinks. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Just kind of trying to go based off this one, but it, again, that's gonna change. So as long as you're you got them sort of together. Maybe I'm going to do a little bit of blue coming down this little edge here. The spiral one's kind of fun and free to explore now that you kind of have the idea of how all the colors blend and stuff. Um, you can change it up. It doesn't have to be the exact same. I'm going to leave this edge for something pinks. Um, so then I just kind of had fun with it and I'm going to throw in my purple. I don't like that one. Sometimes I like my, my brighter pencil crowns. Ooh. That's a nice one. I like that purple. I'm just slicing a little bit of purple. And Come in the side and meet up with the blue, maybe. Let's go in a little bit. So I don't completely take over the blue. Sometimes I just slice in the purple in beside it or below it. So it's not taking over and layering over top of the blue. It's just popping in. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, sorry, Sue, I should have actually mentioned that. Whenever I'm drawing, I always have a scrap piece of paper underneath my hand. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. Um, I don't usually do it in my uh, tutorials so that you can always see what I'm doing. But I always cut up or I always have like a folded piece of paper and I cover up my hand while I'm drawing so that I'm not smudging my work. So yeah, for you left-handers, but also right-handers, good practice. It's always good to cover up your hand so you're not smudging. So I usually always mention that. <laughs> uh, so sorry about that. But yeah, good practice. Uh, you can also use onion skin, not like the actual onion skin. Um, it's a piece of paper. And it's like translucent. It's called onion skin paper. Um, you can get it at like Staples. Um, but it's good because you can still see your work underneath. So if it's like something you need to see while you're drawing the rest of your thing, that's also 
kind of it's nice to have. So I went a little bit more purpley on this one. I kind of wasn't paying attention um, instead of green, but that's okay. Purple and green can't mix. So what I'm going to do is just kind of where the purple isn't, I'll add a little bit of green. Again, doesn't matter too much. It'll all sort of, the fun part with the spiral is that it doesn't really have to be too particular. So I'm always kind of just forming those colors. It's almost like they're getting pulled into that center. Yeah, tracing paper. I think that's pretty much what onion skin papers might just be called something different. Uh, so yeah, green. Uh, for those of you probably, if you gotta go, I know it's getting kind of late for some people. Um, there's nothing really left just to do your warm colors and then erase that center just if you have to go. Um, but yeah, thank you uh, for joining. Really appreciate it. I'm going to finish my piece. So thank you for those who are sticking around for the long haul. Hope you guys had fun. Happy Pride. Again, this wasn't really intended for it, but kind of worked out that way. <laughs> to be nice and rainbowy. Um, and just be kind to everybody. Everybody's going through their own thing. COVID has not been pleasant for mental health on most people, so. If you ever want to check out my personal artwork, you can always check out my art Instagram. I never really advertise it, but why not? Um, it is Karina, so K-A-R-I-N-A -A dot M dot creations on Instagram. I do a lot of commission work, a lot of dogs, a lot of portraits. Oh, I'm kind of liking this one. This one's fun. I went a little darker with it, but I really like it. I'm going to go in with some warm colors. Take it down a notch. Ooh, maybe not. Hi, Rand. Nice to see ya. I'm going to go in with that orange on the opposite. <gasps> See the difference? Just that little pop of orange. Boom. It just like makes those cool colors softer, I find. I might tone down these actually just a bit you can even like if your cool colors are like too dark you can even just erase into them and it helps make it look like it's just part of the shell it almost like fades it in Or you could use a little blending tool. This is called a burnisher. It's like a pencil crown, but it kind of it smudges things together like, like that. I'll write it out so you can see. And creations. I should put it in the comment section. Can see it. Um, what was I doing? Oh yeah, this is a burnisher. Probably hard to tell, but it like it's almost like it melts the colors together. Uh, it's really 
fun. You could use a white pencil crown, kind of does the same thing as well. Just throw in some color. Oh, I guess we got to do this little part. Um, one second. I'm just going to finish up a little section. I'm going to throw in more yellow, too. Just a dash. That was the wrong yellow. <laughs> it's orange. Uh, okay. Yeah, but this one is kind of like that same idea here where I just went really dark. I gotta fix that up. That does not look pleasant down there. I went in with the dark blue. Kind of kept like this little area highlighted. Yeah, Q tip is um really awesome for smudging too depending on your pencil crown so it doesn't work really with every brand of pencil crown or paper um but yeah you could use a q-tip uh, the eraser is just the stadler honestly i'm a huge fan of stadler for all my commission pieces that's the only pencil i use really um you can get them on Amazon. You can get them at Walmart. They're really good. And the paper I'm using today, it's like a thicker piece. So it's by Strathmore. Um, the Bristol, it's smooth surface. So it doesn't have to be this brand, but the smooth surface is what I'm using. And just so you know, the thicker the paper, so you can go, the thickness is based on like pounds. This one's a hundred pounds. So if you're up in around like 90, 90 to a hundred pounds, this is usually what I like to use when it's like my hard copy um, sort of piece. Like if I'm doing a commission piece and it's gonna be my final piece, it's not just for playing. Um, I like that harder paper. And it's easier for erasing, it's easier for blending, it's just really nice and it's thick. So it's like kind of like, ooh, it's legit. Um, so it it is that the weight of the paper can make a difference. Um, printer paper, like your regular everyday paper, I find is really not the best for playing around with your colors and your your drawing. Um, so I do recommend the better the tool, sort of the better the outcome I always find. Sorry, I really messed this up. I was not paying attention. I was kind of looking at the comment section, but I didn't blend my colors too well down here. Oh well. Anyways, you can kind of play around with it and get it to sort of how you like it. Make sure you kind of have like a nice highlight Going down the center, maybe add in, I'm going to go and slice in some pink between my purple and my orange and kind of call it a day on that. Maybe play around with it later. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys had a great time and were able to sort of learn something new, something, you know, or get something from this video. Um, even if it was just to learn how colors blend or how to draw a spiral. I don't know. Um, but 
thank you so much for supporting me and supporting Artist Palette. I always really appreciate it and love taking suggestions. And you can always join our Facebook group. Um, it's Artist Palette uh, Painting and Drawing Support Group. And if you want to show us your, your results, you can post it on there. Um, so that's not our official Facebook group. It's just a support group so that you can kind of talk to others um, on Artist Palette and um, kind of show off your work. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm just going to check out the comments. Make sure. Oh, thank you. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. I hope to see you guys in a future class. Thank you. Okay, bye everyone. Ciao.